You try to serve what the people want, like a good version of a New York style. And the beauty of it's not bad for you. That's my favorite component of the pizza. See, look, bagara. New York slices, buy the slice, affordable, it tastes great. Pizza was the best in the city when we were kids. Those spots that I grew up eating at are mostly gone. The original concept of a slice shop is for people to come in and be able to afford to go eat. Because a lot of the shops aren't owned for people from New York anymore. They can't really connect and relate to what New York pizza really is. You know what I'm saying? I worked in pizzerias for like 10 years. No one else was doing something by the slice that was actually healthy, actually not made with like chemicals. Our pizza's yeah. organic. I wanted to create something like that and no one else does. First step we do is we milk our uh, wheat berries that we prep for the dough. A lot of the wheat we have here in the States is banned in Europe. I mean, <laughs> and I was like, you know what? A lot of the general public, don't, they don't understand that like wheat's healthy. They go to Europe, everyone's eating bread all day. They eat croissants, they eat, <laughs> they eat baguettes, they walk down the street eating baguettes. They're eating it all day, and they're not obese. The obesity isn't a problem in Europe. And they're always eating wheat. There's a correlation between how the wheat is here compared to the wheat that's overseas. So I did a lot of research on that, and I was like, you know what? Let's do something that's nutritious. So you could only grind to a certain extent. Once you reach that certain temperature, then you start killing nutrients in the flour. At first it was hard for all of us because we've never really done it before, and then we're like, oh, okay. That's how we do it. Whew. All right, this is our great sifter. <laughs> before we used to build and sift everything, and then we got way too busy, and then I got lucky, and I found a grower in upstate New York that builds flour fresh. I really did get lucky. I was like, oh man. Sifter is to separate the brand from the actual wheat. Because the thing is with the extra brand, even though it's healthy, the flavor profile is a little too strong. It's not a classic New York slice of pizza. And after we sift the bread out, we allow it to ferment naturally. This is cake yeast. The yeast we use is all natural. Like, there's nothing wrong with using cake yeast. I like the flavor profile because it's the flavor profile of pizza from my youth. This now, we just allow it to sit and work. It's magic for a little while. We normally let it sit for about a couple hours to make it dissolve. And then after that, add the fresh flour with the fresh flour that's already built from us from upstate New York. Now we add our flour, which is a mix of three flours, and then off we go. So that's all by look and feel. Most of the time it's really precise, but sometimes you never know. And we add salt. It's more salt. <laughs> it looks like a lot, but it really isn't. It's just 400 pizzas, yeah, exactly. Then the last, the piece of the resistance is the olive oil. And that should get, come together in about 10 minutes. It was a tough learning curve. <laughs> it was a lot of frustration. You know, I'm a fighter, I grew up with nothing. When you grew up with nothing, you learn how to fight, so. See how the whole thing moves? Elasticity moves around, it means it's all forward. We let it ferment about four or five hours before we touch it. Take it out in bulk, then start sectioning it off into dough balls. I like using oil because the oil sticks to the dough. I don't like using flour because it changes the, the dough. Place one of these guys in there. Get all the sides to it. Now they got machines that can do this for you. When you add machines, too many machines to the process, it kills the delicacy of the dough. I'm closing the sieve, basically. To suck out all the air so when it starts fermenting, it's not rising in the tids. What happens is if you get the air inside when it's rising, it thins out the middle. So when you're opening up the pizza, you'll get a thin spot right in the middle. <laughs> so you're trying to avoid the thin spot. So there's like a two, three day ferment period. So it's all a rotating process, so like we got dough everywhere. We now let ferment another two, three hours before we use it, and then we use it. That's it, voila, we got dough. 
Wow, this door's beautiful. Though. My first experience with making pizza was in Lombardi's about 18 years ago. I was working as a server and I just, I don't know what it is, I, like, I just saw it, the guy making a pizza. He was always nice to me, the pizza maker. They don't show anyone. I just started watching it make it. I was like, oh, mind if I give it a shot? Oh, yeah. Always top side up. I'm gonna do the cheese. practice at home, then I practice with them, and then they would teach me like all these different nuances, you know? And just pick up repetition and dealing with them, them being on top, you go, no, you gotta do it this way, no. Time for the squares. We run out of these quick because they're more laborious to make. It's, it's just a balancing act around all that. That's it. Pepperoni coming up. Just one? At the end of the day, I just wanted something that was part of my childhood in terms of flavor, texture, something that's by the slice where everyone can have it. For me, pizza is a way to cater to the people I grew up with. I didn't grow up in the best neighborhood, so for me, it was like, I'm gonna make sure like people that come from my background could also eat. Everyone could come in and go, yeah, I mean, who can't eat anywhere between three to ten bucks, you know? Have a good meal, a drink. We get everything. We get tourists, we get local still. Every race, every color, <laughs> the way I wanted it to be, so. I wouldn't want to serve people with something I wouldn't eat. You can't believe it's made with good organic shit, right? People are like, oh, organic, this, again. It's actually good for you. <laughs> believe me when I tell you that. If you want to actually reach the top of the peak or challenge to be at the top, and then you need to actually pay the dues, work with people that you admire and respect. I do it for a reason. Like I do it because I want people to eat better. Like I figured, you know, I'll make money regardless. I'm not in a rush to make money. I never had it before, so, <laughs> so it's nice.